Okay, here we go. Hey everyone, this is Mark from Avalanche here. Today we are joined by the Snake City team. Snake City is uh, the next Avalanche IDO, and we're going to uh, talk with the guys here today uh, about the project, about uh, the, the game and its future roadmap, some interesting um, technical developments that they're, that they're working on, and the, the place of the game in the Avalanche uh, GameFi ecosystem. So thanks a lot for uh, joining us here today, guys. Um, before we get started, what's up? Uh, before we get started <laughs> here, uh, why don't you guys just quickly introduce yourself, Daniel? You, you can go first. Um, you know, who are you, and uh, what do you what, what do you do on Snake City? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Mark, for having us today. Uh, this is Daniel from uh, Snake City team, and uh, yeah, uh, alongside with me, we have uh, Frank also joining the interview today uh, regarding the Snake City project overview. Mm -hmm. Right on. Hi, and, I'm what's up, Frank? And Frank, tell, tell everyone who, who, who you are on the team. Yeah, so hi, everyone. Thank you, Mark, for having us today. Uh, my name is Frank. Currently, I am as a CMO of the Snake City team. And i um, uh, very glad to have on a call with uh, Avalon and for the next idea. Right on. Um, so, before we before we really really get into it, let's talk about um, your guys' background and, and how you got into crypto and how you ended up, you know, working on this game. You know, you look at a game, you say it's a it's a game, but I think it's important to understand um, your guys' skill sets and, and what brought you to want to uh, to launch this and build this and work on this for for a long time to come. So let's build out a picture of uh, of who you guys are and how you got here, starting with before crypto. Yeah, sure. Uh, I have uh, more than eight years working in IT industry and uh, into software and game uh, development. Uh, actually, I started working in the blockchain field uh, from 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, my my first project is a wallet development with my partner in, in, in Canada. So uh, I also have uh, experience uh, not only in uh, blockchain, uh, public blockchain, it is crypto space. Uh, and I also have experience in uh, private blockchain. Uh, here, it is hyperledger fabric, uh, hyperledger technology uh, from IBM. That uh, I have done two projects. Uh, first, uh, with the Casicon Bank in Thailand with the letter, letter of guarantee system. And also, I have a project in uh, uh, safety application for frontier worker in a uh, construct, construction industry council in Hong Kong. And uh, I myself uh, is organizer of hyperledger fabric meetup in Hanoi. Uh, it is one of the first uh, meetup about uh, blockchain uh, in Vietnam. And uh, yeah, you know, in, in Southeast Asia countries, we really into the game. And I must, I, I, I'm also, I played a, a lot of traditional game and recently a uh, blockchain game. And uh, I really would love to create, you know, a game to bring the fun for the people, uh, easy to play. So uh, that made me to come to Snake City and meet up with the team here to build up the Snake City at the moment. Cool, cool. Thanks, Frank. What about you? Yes, so yeah. Similar to Daniel, I have uh, almost ten years working in ICT and IT as well. And uh, in two thousand, we actually we have been in the crypto space pretty early, two thousands, early two thousand seventeen. Uh, but at that time, we were just like you know investor and you know observer at that time and. Early 2019, I have a chance working for an FT startup in Singapore. Uh, we, I, I work with uh, the top crypto artists like Park, Mark Kane, Justin Miley, uh, and uh, we build uh, several products for uh, for, an, uh, for NFT space. Even you know, um, you know, our last uh, products uh, even feature in in Lab Lab website. You know, you know the um, the uh, studio behind the crypto punk collections. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the more, uh, the longer uh, I've been in the space, um, I think that, you know, crypto is going to be the future and DeFi and GameFi, uh, you know, are the two in the, uh, indispensable pieces of, of the crypto space. So, uh, we have, you know, so we team up uh, with Daniel and, and the other guys and, and, and learning about the products and, and business necessity. And we want to bring necessity to be the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the you know the the top game five, uh, the top game in the game five center in the uh, in the next few years. 
Mm -hmm. Right on, man. So, so, so tell us about the game. Tell us about Snake City at like a, a really high level. You know, why, why build like this style of game, you know, this theme? How did you guys uh, decide to build this? And, and, and what, what are you building? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think that uh, the, uh, you know, uh, Snake City is an uh, NFT game uh, built on Avalanche uh, with the Snake concept. When we talk about the Snake concept, I think that uh, everybody remember about the Snake game in Nokia, uh, you know, back to 2000, right? And uh, that is a uh, very familiar concept with everybody. Uh, and uh, uh, we are inspired by a really famous game. Uh, it is a Slater.io game. And our idea is that we want to create a casual game and skill-based game that target at a mass market audience, as opposed you know, to compare with other hardcore game, they are target uh, at the hobbyist uh, gamers. So we focus on the concept of fun or uh, simple gameplay that is easy to understand, simple user interface as well. And we configure the game with a short section, less learn skill, so a game can be played uh, during, you know, during the work break or whenever mm. they have a time, for example, they wait for the train, they definitely can bring the phone and play Snake City. And we choose, uh, the reason we choose Snake Concept because our, it's not only for the people really easy to understand about that concept and familiar with that, but also we can have a lot of things uh, that we can do here. We can create the fun for the tradable skin, for example, are uh, the game token that lets the gamer buy, you know, power up item or trace, or uh, and uh, we have a lot of you know attribute regarding the the cell size of the length of snake and also the zoom out ability. So, or uh, that kind of game, we have a more room to create, uh, you know, the experience for the gamer and a lot of you know personalized personalization experience that we can configure for every gamer to join in Snake City. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, like, what makes this game like special and unique? And, and uh, like, I want to kind of come at this from, from two angles. One, we have something like Slither.io, which is like a pretty well-known game. It's a pretty familiar concept. <clears throat> and so I want to understand how this game like departs from that and, and differentiates itself from that and, you know, and, and why build it, you know, with the NFT and crypto components, but then also with just gaming, GameFi in general, right? Like already a very just sort of like evolving yet saturated space at the same time. And, and people are really trying to um, come up with like interesting, enduring games and concepts. And so I want to understand how Snake City also stands out like in this regard. So from Slither, but also from like GameFi in general. Yeah, so uh, to compare with uh, Slither, a traditional game, I think that our Cinex City have a, a lot of more fun because uh, Slither, they only have a one game mode that they put all the player, you know, in a pool to play uh, each other. And there's no reward, uh, you know, uh, uh, for, for the gamer joining in. And in Cinex City, we have a uh, six game mode that we create it around the NFT ecosystem and also the game economy to, uh, you know, make the, the gamer more experienced and, you know, more excited to join the game. And uh, uh, that's why uh, we are much, you know, uh, more fun to compare with Slater.io. The people can choose every mode that they, they like. For example, I only have a 30 second. That is no way I can play Slater.io because in, or, in order to I uh, feature in the leaderboard of Slater.io, I need to spend four hours or six hours to play. Yeah. But in here, yeah, in here, uh, I can pick the training modes only one minute per turn. So I can also receive the reward. But also I can join in Arena Battle, which more time longer with 30 minutes or one hour to play. Mm -hmm. And that's why we config a lot of game mode based on the, you know, the, the time that the gamer can spend in in, in the in our game, yeah. That so that is the difference between like uh, CD and Slater.io. And to compare with uh, the game file, I can say uh, there are uh, some points to make Snake City stand out and more unique. The first one, um, I can say that or uh, 
I see, I haven't seen many gaming project that they fall into the trap, you know, of doing too much at once. They try to uh, accomplish everything instead of aiming for simplicity. And uh, regarding the gameplay, I think that, yeah, definitely that there are a lot of games out there. There are c h i p a game. And yeah, I'm also excited about the c h i p a game, but not all game need to aim for, you know, that category. It can be simple and fun to run. So I think that start off with the simple and fun gameplay mechanic, and then we evolve, we develop from there. So in Snake City, we focus on simplicity, personalization, and addiction, uh, because the game definitely need to be addiction. And uh, the second part that makes Snake City different from other game that we really want to create the fun and fair. Or the goal here is not to focus on you know the value of token. Instead, you know, focus on getting people interested in the gameplay. And I think uh, the the concept of uh, Snake is uh, is proven because of like a Slito.io or Snake.io, they have more than 100 million dollars and a lot of people playing a day, right? So, or uh, I think that uh, for uh, uh, Snake City, we have a lot of event created, you know, around our ecosystem. For for example, we have a spring event, Easter event, or uh, a lot of surprise item NFT drop to make the community uh, really exciting to play the game. Mm-hmm. And or uh, the next part to make Snake City uh, different from other game is regarding we. Doing, we are doing really carefully regarding the game economy design to make sure that we have a sustainable game economy uh, with the burning mechanism, utility of the token in game, uh, uh, and and more than that. And the last point, it is um, we uh, in our roadmap, we don't want to limit Snake City is only in our ecosystem. We really want to partner with other crypto project and even other game fi. And we uh, have uh, the game mode that we call it is a sponsor event that we let the gamer and the user can earn other token, you know, or uh, an NFT from our partner in in Snake City. So uh, step by step, uh, Snake City can become the not only the game five but also the promotion uh, platform to help other crypto project in, uh, you know, in AVAX uh, ecosystem or in in other uh, you know platform as well. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Now, Frank, maybe this is a maybe this is a question for you. So, you're, when you're thinking about taking Snake City to market and acquiring users, and, and the idea that this is going to be like a fun, simple yet like uh, entertaining game that can uh, onboard a lot of users, I think that makes sense to me. Um, but how do you go about like attracting users, attracting community, getting the game out there, marketing the game? Uh, what does that What does that strategy look like, Frank? Yeah. Um, so um, that's a great question. So regarding onboarding new users, uh, actually uh, we have observing and learn a lot from uh, you know even s l i t e r i o uh, in Vietnam in South Asia. A lot of people, you know, streamer, the streaming uh, the while they're playing uh, on YouTube on Facebook, and I could say that daily there could be you know over 100 k users follow um, you know watching their live stream. So um, our strategy, go to strategy, is that we are going to work very closely with the uh, you know the top streamers in in those countries, in their local countries, and we we onboard from there. And also in our game mode, we have uh, a free zone game mode in the in the internet phase. And from in this phase, our target is that to convert those non crypto users into the our into the crypto space with the free no. Um, No investment at all, easy to play and free, uh, pretty similar to uh, Slither.io. And mm-hmm. from there, we will you know transition them from the free zone to uh, training mode to Iron b a t o tournament and uh, describing a sponsor event game mode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so you mentioned like a few game modes right there, and, and maybe it makes sense to just kind of transition into um, some of the gameplay itself. And so. Uh, Daniel, you you sort of alluded to this earlier that one of the things that makes Snake City unique and like um, 
sustainable from a gameplay perspective is like these various game modes that are kind of targeted toward different types of users who are after a different gaming experience and like depending on where they're at and maybe if they have crypto or don't. So let's talk about each one of those. And I kind of want to understand like who each, what each zone or mode um, is like what, what user is it built for basically. So you have the training mode, the battle mode, the tournament mode, free zone, discovery and sponsor. So let's just start off the top, the training mode. Like what is that and who is it for? Uh, I think you're having a, a sound issue here, Daniel. Uh, okay. <laughs> Actually, for for Synex CD, uh, the reason we design six game mode because we categorize and separate the gamer when joining uh, our game, right? Yeah. So I can say that there are uh, some type of gamer. The first one uh, who want to test out the game only. You know, they don't really you know invest the game uh, into the game file. So we have a free zone mode for them, right? And the second one that uh, the people are willing to buy the NFT. Uh, so we have a training mode. Training mode is just the mode for the people play with the computer. So they're more familiar with that game and how to play, you know, um, in, in, in kind of game, how to kill other snake uh, first. And then we have an arena battle. It is the game mode that we create for the people play against each other. So. When the people reach level seven, they need to play in arena battle. So they have a better skill, they practice the game enough and uh, they play a game with each other. So uh, they have a you know, better reward on that. And uh, we also have the gamer who want to you know, challenge privately you know, uh, with other gamers. So we have a tournament uh, game mode. It's uh, similar to sit and go or poker, right? So the people need to buy the entrance ticket and uh, the winner will take the pool. So it is something like a high skill, you know, a gamer to join in tournament mode. Mm -hmm. And to, to serve the gamer playing in the arena battle and tournament mode, we have an in-game item, right? So the people can buy the in-game item to power up their snake and join in, in that game mode. And more than that, we have the gamer who really in love with the game are willing to stake our token. They believe in the future of Snake City. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, when they stake the token, we create the ticket for them. We give them a ticket so they can join in discovery mode. That is exclusively for you know the gamer. Uh, you know, uh, focus on the uh, really in love, uh, loyal with the game. And mm -hmm. uh, the final one that we have a, a sponsor event uh, that is the a game mode that we give many reward for the user because we don't want to limit ourselves in only Snake City ecosystem. We want the user to have more reward by playing Snake City game. It's not only NCT, TOC is our two token, but also maybe Sava <laughs> in the future, right? Or mm -hmm. Joe or NFT as well, right? Mm -hmm. So that is why we configure it in every game mode by player type that we have. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's um, I think I think it's really smart. And so someone uh, can actually tell us about like how how one might uh, upgrade their snake to make it more competitive, right? Because it sounds like these are the things that a user might actually have to acquire and invest in. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what like boosting the snake would look like for like a battle or tournament mode. Yeah, definitely. That uh, for the snake, we have a, a rarity of snake that you buy the egg and you open the egg, you have a rarity of snake with randomly. Uh, is, is a Zolak. In, in a lucky day, you have a high rarity of snake, right? When you have a high rarity, higher rarity snake, you have a higher archibald to joining in, you know, uh, the arena battle and tournament. But mm -hmm. we also have a level. Uh, in, in the level, uh, when they play uh, the game more, the experience, the more experience they accumulate, right? So. When the snake have a higher level, it also has higher, you know, attribute. So we create really, you know, fair for everybody. So if I have a lower rarity of snake, I need to play more to, to you know, have a better, you know, attribute of snake. And mm -hmm. also, uh, if I have a, you know, um, 
best, uh, you know, good skill, okay, I can go without the in-game item. But definitely that I have some strategy when I join in the game, right? I want to win, so I have some strat- in-game item that I bring with my hero, so I can do it, you know, in the battle. So mm-hmm. to make sure that I have a more advantages to compare with my, you know, enemy. So that is uh, a lot of strategy out there. Uh, it's based on, you know, the 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 style of the the, the gamer. Mm-hmm. And with uh, like with the Slither game, I mean, I've played it. Um, there isn't, as far as I can remember, a lot of opportunity to level up your character, or deploy special items. You're just sort of growing over time, right? Is is that right? Yes, it is correct. It's correct in 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 a battle, just only in the battle, and uh, in this next year, we also create a journey for every snake that how to involve them, how to develop the snake in every game mode, mm-hmm. uh, how many experience that they accumulate for each game mode, yeah. and how to uh, upgrade the snake. Is that is the same that we also have a journey for that, and or uh, but yeah, I, like I mentioned, Slither is just only in the arena battle. Yeah. But in, in, in Snake City, we have uh, you know more than that, right. and yeah. Mm-hmm. And and you can like breed, and there's there's breeding, right? And then there's also fusion. Um, these are two distinct uh, operations in the game. So uh, let's talk about what the difference between that is. But I also want to talk about because uh, in, in a little bit we're going to cover the like upcoming NFT sale. And so I want you to like help a, a, a future player start to understand maybe some like strategies that might exist here or, or at least how to think about um, developing their own, right? So uh, when you're looking at breeding or fusion, how, how would you approach uh, the NFT sale? And in that, maybe you can kind of describe what those things actually are. Yeah. I think that for breeding and fusion, uh, Frank, uh, do, you, do you want to say something? Yeah, for the fusion, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so uh, uh, because uh, we want to uh, create like uh, um, for um, for um, so in order to uh, because uh, in our snake city, uh, um, uh, two snake NFT can be you know breeding together. Uh, in the breeding feature, and also we have another feature like fusion. So uh, to level up to um, because uh, in our NFT share we only share um, have a very limited numbers of NFT. That's for sure. That's why uh, <coughs> breeding and fusion can help to uh, the uh, um, grow the NFTs uh, to um, uh, a new snake can be born uh, with. Uh, yeah. I think that I can uh, supplement something in there uh, with, with the, uh, uh, Frank. Firstly, I think that I, I need to explain a little bit more about the breeding and infusion uh, for the community understand more about that. So uh, the breeding, uh, that is one of, you know, uh, the, the feature for the in-game token, right? And we also have, uh, we require the snake hero with need to be at least level three are able for for breeding because uh, you know for some other game that they allow it breeding immediately so the people just buy an NFT and breeding and have right. another NFT and selling in in the marketplace right so right. we need the people really play our game and it's also like a nature right the snake should be mature enough so they need to achieve level three uh, uh, so they can breed and or uh, we also have uh, the breeding help the snake you know, generate the baby snake and joining in the, the battle. And I think that because uh, like Frank mentioned, we only have a 630 NFT is very limited. Uh, so because we calculate carefully regarding the, how many breeding times for each snake and hop. And uh, uh, basically they have, you know, five times for snake. And it's also depend on, depending on, you know, the generation of snake as well. So or that's why the breeding is very, uh, really, really, you know, hot function and feature because the NFT is very limited. 
mm-hmm. and the people who go are willing to 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 play the game to achieve level three, and then they break uh, breeding, right? And fusion is something different. Uh, like uh, uh, they need to hover uh, three, you know, uh, snake and fuse to become one higher rarity snake. Mm-hmm. It's something like concept. For example, uh, I open the egg and I I'll open I open to snake right. But in his unlucky day, uh, all the snake is rarity one, right? So <laughs> I, I really want to have uh, the rarity five, but I, I only have a three snake rarity one. So what, you know, how I can do? So I can go to the fusion mm-hmm. and I can fuse three of them to have a higher snakes, higher rarity of snake to joining in on uh, training mode and arena battle. So that's why we, we have those two, you know, uh, feature in, in, in our game. So it brings, you know, more experience for the gamer. I see. So the, the breeding will uh, produce more snakes so more players can play. And the fusion will actually okay. take snakes out of circulation, creating a higher, higher rare snake. Uh-huh, cool. Um, so with the NFT sale that's coming up, did you say there was 663? Uh, we can't hear you. It's only it, it's only a uh, six hundred and thirty uh, NFT sales. Okay, and yeah. so uh, I think you kind of covered it, but but why that specific number? Yes, or uh, I think that our uh, uh, we have or uh, I think um, for for the next city we are um, we focus on uh, you know the sustainable uh, game uh, rather than. I think that there are a lot of game I see out there. They want to success, you know, in just two months or three months launching. We are uh, totally, you know, different. We want to start with small NFT generated lists first because uh, we try to build the loyal community first. And we want to uh, control the economy well before we're ready to expanding with the 100,000, you know, player. Yeah. And I think... Uh, that concept is similar to Step N, that is project uh, really success recently, that or they they gradually onboard the user and the gamer and let them to stick to the game and uh, control the, everything in the game well, and then we just uh, expanding is only you know uh, in 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 the future we'll soon about that, but uh, a lot of game they sell like uh, ten thousand or ten thousand NFT first. I think that are uh, it is somehow it is their strategy, but we we not really into that. We choose the way we gradually increase the user joining the game mm-hmm. and try to have the loyal community serve them well. Have really great the game economy control. That is our strategy. Mm-hmm. So for any player, <clears throat> excuse me, that's uh, or future player that's that's listening to this that wants to. Uh, like become a player, join the community, kind of get a, a head start, you know, um, for this, uh, for the, the Snake City sort of road, uh, you would just encourage them to participate in the NFT sale, pick up some snakes. Uh, ho- hopefully you get something good. Um, and, and, and that's really it and see where you, see where you land. Um, maybe do some breeding, maybe do some fusion, but it's really about what you, what you get out of that initial uh, 630 NFT um, snake sale. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to that. And, you know, by the time this, uh, goes out, um, which won't be uh, too far in the future here, um, that, that will be coming up soon. So definitely like if you're not a part of the stake city community yet, if you're just learning about it through like this video or the Avon launch IDO, definitely go join that community and, um, follow the social so you can be involved in that because it is a low number. So I, I suspect that will, um, probably do pretty well if I if I had to guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you guys are also um, so that's like kind of some of the core game gameplay mechanics. A little bit of the economy. We'll go kind of deeper into uh, the token itself in a little bit, <clears throat> and some of like the challenges there. Excuse me. Um, but you guys will be. At some point in the future, probably not the too distant future, um, exploring your own subnet. Um, and I think that's going to be a, a great thing for the community and the game and the, and the future sort of uh, uh, um, 
economy of the, of the token itself. So let's just talk a little bit about it. Um, why are you looking at a subnet? Why is it important uh, for for the game? And what do you hope to uh, achieve by by <clears throat> deploying on uh, your own uh, on a subnet? Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, subnet is one of the reason that we go ahead with you know avalanche uh, you know technology when mm -hmm. we design the game. Uh, to be honest, in uh, the first call with my team when we decide, hey, what blockchain platform that we should go ahead. We have uh, some opinion. Hey, Binance Smart Chain. To be honest, like uh, in in here, Binance Smart Chain is very you know famous and popular. And some yeah. opinion, Solana is also a great technology. Mm -hmm. And but when we are uh, research uh, carefully regarding you know the technology we choose, Avalanche uh, is not only about the or uh, the the development team in Avalanche. They work very seriously regarding technology, but also the subnet technology that right. makes us. Uh, uh, the 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 reason we choose uh, the avalanche, and I think that uh, many blockchain at the moment they have tried to achieve you know scalability in their own way, right? But uh, I can say that it's, it's, there is you know no clear winner yet. Uh, there are some projects like uh, Arbitrum or Polkadot, Parachain, Parachains. They Polkadot have a limited slot. And Polygon, they ex experienced the congestion due to the, you know, a lot of game in there. So, uh, in fact, you know, many scaling solutions, they need to sacrifice, uh, you know, an aspect of blockchain, like the scalability, security, or decentralization to achieve, you know, the bet better throughput. So, I think, but the subnet in Avalanche, I can say that it is on uh, the other hand that is simply built on top of the existing Avalanche network. So, uh, you know, uh, optimizing the traffic using a native token for gas. So we have a cheaper gas for the gamer. We have a uh, customer, you know, network to open the door for the many use case and bring the more experience for, for the gamer. So um, that's why we really uh, into the subnet and we put the subnet uh, integration is one of the milestone for SnakeSky uh in in the near future it's only one or two months after release the game and yeah let's keep uh posted about you know our news via social channel review soon to make the official you know announcement on that yeah yeah well, i'm sure we'll we'll be you know uh kind of covering that and talking about it as it as it comes out and um when you guys do put that out you know i'm sure we'll come back and we'll do this again uh we'll talk about the launch of that and um, i think that'll be that will be really exciting but for um, a game, a user, a player who's used to just <clears throat> connecting their MetaMask um, to a, a web application or, you know, what, what is the, the functional difference um, in experience between uh, playing a game on the C chain and playing the game uh, on a subnet? What, what, what does a user need to, to pay attention to to, uh, to achieve that? Yeah, I think that the first attention that they need to pay, it is about, you know, the chip gas fee is a happy you know <laughs> point for all the user like mm -hmm. i said that subnet can reduce uh, you know at least 20 percent of the gas fee because in the game of fight we have a lot of transaction uh the gamer need to take you know every you know game mode and also yes. uh, in, in desktop so uh they they will be a little bit surprised hey it's quite it's quite cheap to go on subnet so yes. it's a happy point yeah mm -hmm. but uh, you know, uh, regarding the gameplay is the same, but regarding the step of converting the token and also NFT, it could take uh, some time to do that. And they need to play our game. Uh, they need to buy the NFT in the subnet. And then they play the game and they receive a token in subnet and they need to convert the, the, the token in subnet to, you know, uh, the token in C chain and they can uh, go to the, the market for, for that. So mm -hmm. it's only one step to do that or more for the gamer. But, you know, in return, they have a really cheap, you know, a gas and also more experience, uh, better experience also joining uh, when they join the game by something. Yep. Yep. But there's also going to be a, a mobile version of this game. So iOS and Android at some point. Uh, so what's like the... Uh, what's the difference between these two experiences for a player? Like, can a player expect to uh, 
kind of transition between um, web and mobile pretty seamlessly? Do they have to choose uh, one or the other? And, and, and why did you guys do, decide to go ahead and, and build a mobile version of this game? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that uh, we, we already run two rounds of testnet, you know, and uh, we the recent round, we have more than 800 uh, a type five uh eight thousand five hundred player, and we have a, a lot of question, and we don't have any question regarding how to play the game, but we have a question regarding why I can't play in the mobile. <laughs> so, the mobile is something like uh, really you know that the people really want to play the game in mobile because uh, so next city we config the game in the short section right, so they really want to play the game during the work break. They wait for the train. They immediately, they, they definitely that they cannot bring the PC on their hand, right? They bring the mobile. So they want to play the game at that time, right? So uh, the mobile version uh, is uh, uh, something that we put it pr high priority in the Snake City roadmap. At the moment, they can play it via browser of the mobile, but very soon they can play it in the application in the iOS and Android. And the, I think the UI of the mobile for the PC is not much uh, different. Uh, even like in mobile, they are using two hands in the PC using the mouse. In, in the mobile, they has two hands with the button in the left uh, and the right corner of the, you know, the phone. And uh, yeah, uh, it's the only thing different. It's only slight different regarding the UI. Uh, very cool. Well, uh, I'm, I would be excited to, to test, <laughs> excuse me, test out the mobile when that's ready. Um, let's, let's talk about the, the token and the, to uh, the tokenomics in the economy. Um, a really popular topic, uh, these days. And, and it's, this has been the case for a while. Our, um, game economics, sustainable game economics, you know, uh, looking back in hindsight about what what went wrong with some of these some of these games and how to do it better. Uh, so before we get into the specifics, <clears throat> excuse me, of Snake City um, and the game economy, um, I just want to like generally talk about what are the important things that you guys looked at and are looking at um, in in making sure that you all are developing. Um, a sustainable economy that's going to support um, the players during um, uh, an initial period of the game, bad market conditions, and you know a, a long-term kind of roadmap for this game. What what are the important things that you guys pay attention to to make sure that that is the case? Yeah, for sure. I think that uh, to be honest, like uh, we have experience uh, developing the traditional game. However, like uh, developing the game five, it is you know. Is more 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 thing that we need to pay yeah. attention, yeah, because the uh, game five that we need to balance a lot of things, mm -hmm. and uh, the traditional game they focus on gameplay, but the game five they focus needs to focus on the gameplay and the game economy, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why there are a lot of you know our uh, uh, calculation uh, for us to to work on when we design the game economy, mm -hmm. and. I think our, we have some solution to, uh, uh, to solve that problem. The first one I can say that our, we put a lot of utility for the, the token, both you know, native token and the in-game token. That is very important. Uh, if, we, if we don't give the you know, utility for the in-game token, the people you know, definitely that when they receive that, they only have a one way, they sell it, right? So, we need to have a lot of utility for the in-game token to keep them uh, back to the game and have a more experience on the game, right? And or and they, they, they want to be featured themselves in the game, for example. So it is something that we create the uh, road, the journey for every gamer when they join in every stage and the, what they think and what do they want and what we'll be, you know, doing and so we can decide the UX to make sure that they have, uh, they, they stay with our game, you know, in the long run. Mm -hmm. And the second point are to make Snake City a uh, game economy more sustainable. I can say it is about the burning mechanism that we use 70% uh, of the revenue from Snake City 
or in NFT sales, in the you know in-game item selling, in the marketplace fee, we use it for you know uh, burning our token and mm-hmm. add liquid for the in-game token. Why mm-hmm. it is a seventy percent? It's not like a sixty or fifty because we calculate it, <laughs> you know, in 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 uh, from outside, and we find that should be you know a number that we put it on you know our uh, the, the mechanism to make sure that. The our token is still keep the value for for the gamers, so they have a, it's fair for them to to play the game. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the last point I I would like to highlight here is regarding you know the gameplay, like uh, if the game itself is focused on I mean the PVE, uh, it is a problem. So we have a six game mode total, and only one game mode is PVE. And mm-hmm. we are only, you know, the player only play in the PV, uh, you know, until re- they reach level seven. Yeah. And we, fought, we, we we need to th- them to play in other game mode because the game they should play <laughs> with, you know, other gamer or, you know, in, in a, you know, or, so they have a more chance to earn more reward and they experience the game, you know. And also we don't need to mean too much the in-game token. And the sponsor event is also the solution that are, uh, help us to bring more reward for, for the gamer. And then they are, uh, we also have, don't need to mean the token from outside as well. So uh, mm-hmm. that's why uh, uh, we quite believe in the Snake City, the game economy when we work on that. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're talking about using 70% of the revenue to burn the token, is that the SNCT token or the TOC token? Yes, um, we have a, actually we have a three treasury. Uh, uh, the first treasury is an NCT treasury, and the second treasury is a TOC treasury. And <laughs> the last point it is the stable treasury. It depend it depend on you know the revenue stream that we have from game, right? In some you know uh, game mode that we collect back the NCT, but in some game mode that the people need to use TOC to pay on the ticket and to pay in the in-game item and in some game mode that they are uh, we uh we config you know the stable coin there so yeah. uh um 17 percent 70 percent here uh we decide for toc treasury we burn 100 percent it's uh nothing to say uh but for fnct treasury we uh try to balance between two token and we also to be honest uh we have a lot of questions, you know, regarding this question for, uh, from our investor. Hey, Daniel, why don't you burn at NCT and let TOC inflation? <laughs> you know? and, but to be honest, like, uh, I need to create the balance. I need to protect the benefit from all the party, right? We need to break the profit for the gamer. That's why we use the majority of the strategy to burn the in-game token. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why... We step in. We, we have a more gamer joining in. Definitely, the project is more valuable. So that is uh, our our vision. We really want to create a loyal, you know, community. Uh, so that's why we use most of the the the, the, the revenue to burn the in-game token. Mm-hmm. Well, let's back let's back up a little bit and talk about each token. So, what is the SNC token? What's its utility? What is the TOC token? What's its utility? Um, and like, what's the difference between the two and, and how did you decide what utility goes where? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that Frank, did you want to say something regarding the utility of the at NCT token and TOC token? Yeah, uh, uh, we have two tokens. So the at NCT is the our native token. So uh, the at NCT uh, have some, you know, Major, uh, major utilities like uh, it's the governance token, of course. Uh, also, uh, yes, uh, the NFT can be uh, used to buy the main NFT in our uh, ecosystem like the app and the Snake Heroes. Uh, uh, for the TOC, uh, for the TOC, we because we we have several, uh, we um, <laughs> Uh, we uh, we want to uh, we have uh, some utilities for the TOC, for example, uh, 
it can be used to buy all the anything in games uh, except the uh, X and the hero uh, as mentioned it can, uh, as I mentioned before uh, it can be used the NFT can be used uh, is the DOC can be used for <coughs> to, um, to uh, buy the entrance ticket in the to play in the tournament uh, can be used to uh, um, to buy the uh, man, uh, mana and also can be used for fusion and breeding as well because you know in this way we uh, the more the utility that we can uh, DOC can be used for the more ways that we can burn the TOC in the total supply uh, and therefore that the inflation rate will be you know uh, reduced and keep you know uh, stable along that we can help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. And so the SNCT essence, fixed fixed cap supply, uh, TOC uh, uncapped supply. Um, and when you're thinking about balancing these two tokens and uh, avoiding inflation, uh, you talked about the burn mechanism, which I think was smart, you know, that makes sense. Um, what other levers do you guys have in place? Um, that you can pull to control uh, the inflation of the token relative to the actual activity of the game. You know, balancing these two things is very, very hard. So I just want to keep talking a little bit longer about what, what you guys are doing to, to manage, manage this, uh, this, you know, very tricky balance. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's really hard to manage, uh, you know, that balance, to be honest. Uh, uh, I think that uh, there are some game modes that we put the reward at, you know, the identity. There are some game modes we put the reward at the TOC. And uh, there are some game modes we need the user stake identity, stake mm -hmm. TOC to, mm -hmm. to join in. And there are some game modes that they need to spend at NCT or spend TOC to <laughs> buy the ticket to joining in. And uh, we, we try to balance, uh, uh, you know, the two token, but uh, why it is still two token is not only one token because you know, um, if you configure it in one token or you know the treasury, I mean the the reward pool is a really problem. It's really 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 hard to to design a reward pool with you know the fixed amount because or more people joining in the more reward that we need to pay right. That is something like uh, really ah. difficult to do with the one token. That's why we configure it in two token so to make sure that we can have more people joining in without you know uh, uh, they worry about the reward that they receive and or uh, uh, also uh, when we um, the burning mechanism is one something I, I, I mentioned here but another thing is about the uh, uh, minting control is also like uh, very very uh, you know important that's why we encourage the people not only playing the training mode they need to play in other game modes. They only play in training mode until level seven. If, uh, for example, AC Affinity is one of the, you know, the typical case with the daily cast. In, in the first launch, they, they let the people playing the daily cast, you know, are pressed every time, every day, but suddenly they stop it, right? Because it is the main reason to make the inflation. So, the, 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 the Snake City, we hover the level seven to cap the people joining in. And also, or after the level seven, they encourage to play other game mode. And also in the Snake City, we hover the min, minimum point and the maximum point that they can earn in every turn, right? And similar to step eight, right? You run, if you run 20 minutes, you receive that, you know, amount of token. If you run two hours, it's the same. Yeah. So in the Snake City, we have some mechanism is the same. Like uh, if you achieve the minimum point, you you win the game, you receive the token. But if you play so well, you play so many times, <laughs> like you stake a lot of time for Snake City, but you only achieve the maximum point only. And that that's why we, we cap for every turn that they can play. And so we can control the economy better. That's why we we are not rushed to mean 10,000 or 20,000 immediately NFT in the first day. We only have a 630. And we try to control it well and gradually, you know, grow the, the system. That's much, you know, sustainable. Mm -hmm. And what, what's the uh, price of the NFTs? Yeah, our, so the interesting thing it is uh, we sell the NFT 
uh, you know, uh, buy our token. Yeah. Uh, not, not you know, a uh, uh, stable coin or AVAX. So right. the reason why we do that because we think we think for the retail investor, right? They if we sell the NFT by you know the AVAX or stable coin, so the the token that they buy from Launchpad it is no utility in the first state, right? It's useless. Yeah. It's only you know trading token, or uh, but we really want to the people buying the token in the Launchpad they can use this to buy the NFT series and the game also happened you know uh, at that time as well. So uh, we 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 want to create you know um, the fair for the retail investor, and that's why our uh, we we set the price of the ad, uh, NFT with the token, yeah, mm -hmm. our token. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you guys have like a, a pretty pretty tight uh, initial roadmap, which I think is with, which is good, right? Part of it is what you're talking about now, um, some immediate utility with the token into the NFT sale. <clears throat> the game launch shortly thereafter, um, and then you know potential subnet at some point um, in the kind of a, like immediate type future. So, what what else are you guys looking at? You know, I know the the different modes of the games are kind of you know not all available at once, coming out over time. So, tell us a little bit about uh, the roadmap, uh, like post IDO. So, the IDO happens. Um, and then, and then what? What what do we know? And then what what do we sort of uh, have a good idea about what's coming next? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think that uh, right after the IDO uh, happened, the people can bring the token that they uh, buy from you know uh, Avalanche to go to the our platform to buy the NFT sales, and our. Uh, we also have a breeding is in our uh, you know roadmap this quarter, and our so in the NFT sales we have a two route, and the first route is a whitelist with uh you know uh, thirty second with the uh, up to three hundred NFT sales in the whitelist, and the second route with public route with the first company first serves. So I think the strategy to hover to own Snake City, you know NFT is a uh, need to join the idea in Avalanche. To make sure that they have a token ready, right, and then they can bring that token to our, uh, you know, uh, platform to buy the NFT, mm -hmm. and uh, because the joining in the uh, idea in Avalanche, they have a token with a uh, better price, and uh, they have a chance to own the NFT very soon. Right. And the marketplace also ready at that time, so that when they buy the NFT, they can play it, or they can sell it in the marketplace. So right. I think that the right strategy is joining idea in, in our launch. And uh, I think uh, in, in the roadmap, uh, yeah, like you mentioned that we still have a lot of things to do uh, regarding, you know, uh, other game mode or, and one of, and subnet. And one of the thing that uh, Snake City is uh, looking for at the moment is it is the multi-chain. And we really believe in the multi-chain, you know, future. And uh, we put it in the, our roadmap and we have a, uh, you know, some uh, study and, you know, uh, preparation from outside to integrate uh, more chain in Snake City. So uh, the people uh, can play it, you know, in, in multiple ways and we have a, you know, better community. Uh, yeah. So it is our roadmap, I have to say, in the next six months and one year. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about uh, watching this all uh, deploy and unfold, and you know, uh, and what you all are gonna, uh, what you all are gonna build. And um, you know, one thing I actually want to cover are your guys's um, like investors and the process you went through there. And um, I want, like, I'm hoping you can talk about um, from the team perspective. Uh, because you guys have you guys have gotten like a lot of good support and um, interest and some like really value add people, uh, including um, Blizzard and uh, Ava Labs. And, you know, uh, like speak to like other game teams, other developers, other builders. Like what, what do you think you guys did that uh, led to you guys having some like good initial success in terms of your partners and backers? Um, what, what, what would you tell another team to pay attention to 
um, that was interested in like generating like strong support like that? How do you, how do you think you achieve that? What do you attribute it to? Yeah, uh, talking about the partner and biker that I think uh, uh, the Snake City, we very selective in the partner that we work with, to be honest. Like, uh, uh, there are a lot of, you know, uh, VCs or partner approaching us. Uh, and But uh, we are not rushed on that. We uh, really select the partner who truly, you know, contribute the long-term, you know, value for Snake City really go ahead you know go with us together with us in the roadmap uh, of snake city and that's why uh yeah we have uh, some partner like you mentioned with uh, our labs we uh, we got the uh, uh, investment from blizzard fund officially and we have our uh, uh, tomo chain labs uh sl2 avatar venture and yeah some other partner as well and uh, one of the partners that snake city definitely looking for in the next after the IDO is other crypto you know project in uh and even other game five because mm -hmm. i myself i believe that one gamer they play a lot of games it's not only snake city right so i believe in the future collaboration and that's why we are open for any you know partnership and are doing together we uh you know uh develop the GameFi and also the Avalanche ecosystem. That is, that is my, you know, my goal. And mm -hmm. I, I, I really, you know, like this way because uh, I believe, you know, uh, we need to stand uh, together and we need to work, you know, uh, we need to like uh, partner together so we can mix up the community. We can support each other. That is very, very nice. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that is uh, the you know, strategy of Snake City. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I uh, uh, our 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 team was um, was really impressed with um, you know your guys's um, kind of conviction about building a really really fun game that honored the user first and foremost, the player, um, and starting and starting from that point. And there's lots of ways that you can do that, but when a team is focused on that. Um, it's very, very clear and very, very obvious. And that's like, that's pretty exciting to us. Uh, but you guys also had a, a lot of strong thinking and very, very clear plans um, around uh, not just the technology, but the user acquisition and the marketing, um, you know, and we, we went through that really, really early um, about how you were going to get this game out in front of people and how you were going to uh, get the players in, get the users in, so you could honor them through all of the things that we're talking about uh, in, in this interview. Um, so you know, we're really, really uh, excited to, to have this on the platform and work with you guys because it's the uh, really, uh, you know, it's the exact kind of team that we, we like to work with. And even though you guys have this multi-chain strategy, right? Like we're not, we don't hate that. We're not scared of that, you know, but you do value the user and you value Avalanche and, and the community here. And that's where you're in. Obviously, that's where you're, where you're starting. Um, so it kind of uh, checks all the checks, all the right boxes for us. And we're, again, really excited to, to support you guys and, and, and watch you grow and evolve. And, um, you know, it's a it's a it's a real pleasure uh, to work with a team like yours. So I want to I want to thank you guys for the for the work that you've done to date. And then I know you'll like continue to do um and yeah uh you know after the launch and you know probably around the time of uh the subnet or the, or the sort of uh, the update you know the next major update we'll, we'll get on we'll do this again soon but um definitely definitely uh really thrilled to have you guys here uh and appreciate your time and uh in, in talking with us and you know our community and getting everyone educated on on uh, on snake city and and, and why you uh, built it and designed it the way you did yeah, thank thanks so much, Mark, for having us today. And definitely, that is our pleasure to working, you know, with our launch. It's one of the biggest, you know, our launch part in in Avax. And I, uh, the reason, you know, to be honest, the reason we go ahead because uh, we believe, you know, uh, you guys can support us a lot, or you know, even after the idea, after the game launch, and other roadmap, other milestone of Snake City in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, you'll be seeing a lot of a lot of us. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. So I think that uh, you know uh, I have a dream. I have a dream like uh, you know Snake City. What is the end game of Snake City after five years uh, mm-hmm. when all the token is released? Um, to be honest, uh, the, my dream is the Snake City is uh, the community project that owned by community and mm-hmm. revenue and everything shared for the community. Mm-hmm. So uh, I really want the Snake City, Snake City someday is not owned by anyone, is owned by the community and mm-hmm. you know run by the community. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. And do you think there yeah. will be you know, five years out, do you think there will be uh, other games? Do you think the, the Snake City uh, universe will just be larger? You know, what, what do you think? I think that our, we have a something. We, we focus on the casual game base. Yeah. And uh, we we want the Snake City have a hub for, you know, a lot of casual game. The player can really relax when playing. And our, that is the casual game developed by the community. And run by the community, and yeah, and that's that is our goal and dream that uh, for the Snake City. Mm-hmm. I love it. All right, guys. Well, <clears throat> Daniel, Frank, always a pleasure. Um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely do it again soon. And uh, again, thanks a lot for uh, for making the time. Thank you, Mark. All right, guys. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Yeah. Have a yeah, good rest. Thank of you. Day. Talk to y'all soon. Yeah. Have All a right. nice day, yeah. Dan. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye, guys.